The main power of democracy is to be united and to support those who are protecting or fighting for this democracy. And as in every marathon, there is a so-called dead spot when a large distance is behind you, but you feel out of energy. And at this exactly the crucial moment to summon up your second wind and keep on running. In this Russian invasion, it's essential for Ukraine that the West helps us keep in the race, helps us defend our land and Western democratic principles, help all of the independent voices who want to be heard. After Russia's massive war against Ukraine, the world will not be the same. Russia perfectly understands its own actions. Having acquired the form of Asian despotism, it declared war on the collective Western world that is not only the countries of the West, but on all those who choose the path of democracy and civilized society. Today, Putin's Russia is a threat not only to the emergent Ukrainian democracy, but also an anti-democratic force on a global scale that has to be opposed with a broad international coalition. And I believe that uh, independent voices from Russia have to be an important part of this coalition. When the full-scale Russia's invasion began on February 24, it was not only an attack on the territorial integrity and independence of Ukraine, the basic democratic principles of the West were also under threat. The Russian invasion is an illegal and brutal assault on freedom, democracy and the rule of law of the whole Western world. That is why it is crucial to every Ukrainian that every small initiative be heard and supported as it can be developed into something powerful. Many average citizens in the West believe that the politicians and the military will find solutions for all the issues and everything will come back as it was earlier. It will not. Experts, media and politicians need to realize the full scale of changes that are taking place and come with this to their voters. Sanctions against totalitarian regimes, such as the regime in Russia, do not change their policy. On the contrary, they consolidate the population on the basis of opposition to the collective enemy, which they consider to be the collective West. Therefore, the real goal of the sanctions of the democratic world is not to change the policy of totalitarian Russia, but to make it impossible for Russia to create weapons, carry out murders and destruction. Our call forecasting the actions of modern Russia is a new topic that needs efforts, funding, conferences and setting up the transatlantic common work of the expert, media, political and military communities. We all have invested in this essential fight to maintain our freedom and dignity in many different ways. As a journalist, I came across many stories, such as when several volunteers started fundraising for military vehicles in Kherson Oblast, who are now helping the Ukrainian armed forces. I talk a lot about Kherson Oblast as I feel attached to this region, bordering my native Crimea. Another example is one of Ukraine's major online websites. They started translating news from Ukrainian into the English language for international audiences and is now an important source for other media around the world. All of these are independent voices that started from their own initiative and now they make a difference. From what I sense and observe these days both in Ukraine and from Ukrainians temporarily displaced abroad, it's like an inspirational and uniting movement with everyone understanding that so much depends on them. And that is why it is so important that Western countries support projects that might not seem necessarily significant in the beginning, but that make a huge difference on the local level and later nationwide and hopefully worldwide. Even though today there is this immense pressure against independent opinions and pro-democratic voices in Russia, there are still a number of NGOs, grassroots initiatives, independent politicians, people in mass media, in academia, who are ready to advocate for democracy, to oppose the regime, to oppose the war. And they do need some support today. In particular, uh, they need support in mass media. Their voices uh, need to be amplified and uh, these people need to be made more visible because they actually articulate opinions that are shared by millions, maybe tens of millions of Russians who have no political representation today.
There's also a need for broader engagement of uh, Russians in general, and especially younger Russians and more educated Russians, through uh, integrating them. I know that a lot has already been done and is being done for Ukraine, and I'm thankful for all your support and aid you provide to my country. And I'm excited about the opportunity that I was given with the Center for European Policy Analysis. As in every relationship, it's about getting and giving back. I believe that Ukraine will stand its ground and liberate all the temporarily occupied territories, defending national security and advance the democratic values of the Western world. And we can do it only together.